Okay, here we have a um, functions question, and you can see they're asking us what what number can't we put into f of x? Well, we know we can't divide by zero in math. That's that's unacceptable. So we don't want this 4x minus 3 being the same value as 0. So let's just uh, find the value of x that would do that. Uh, 4x of x must not equal 3, and so x must not equal 3 quarters. So we can choose any number except for 3 quarters or 0 0.75, and they should work fine. Now for part b, they're saying work out, put an x into the g machine, and then the, what does the g machine do? It takes away 5 from whatever you put in. And then we're going to put what comes out of the G machine into um, the F machine. Now what are we putting into the F machine? We're putting in X minus 5. So everywhere in X, uh, there is an X in the F machine, we're going to replace it with an X minus 5, because that's the input. So X minus 5 all over 4 times by bracket X minus 5, take away 3. And of course our job now is to tidy that up. So let's do so. Uh, X minus 5 over... 4x, now 4, 5 is 20, take away 3, minus 23. I think that's the final answer. Uh, right, for the inverse, remember we've got to reflect things in the line y equals x. My x's become y's, and my y's become x's. Okay, so um, let's rewrite the question, f of x, to find the inverse. We're going to rewrite that as y over 4y minus 3. That's the trick. So x is going to equal y over 4y minus 3. And now I'm going to make y the subject of the formula, and if I can do that, then I can find the inverse. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 4y minus 3 equals y. I'm going to multiply that bracket, which is going to become 4xy minus 3x equals y. And then I'm going to uh, factorize out the x. Oh, sorry, get, sorry, get y's into one side. Now I'm going to factorise out the y I meant. y bracket 4x minus 1 equals 3x, and now divide by that bracket. So y is equal to 3x all over 4x minus 1. And that is the uh, inverse function. All right, so all we have to do now is we have to do the last part, which is a gradient question. So I'm going to use my uh, set square in my geometry set. I'm going to go to the x equals minus 0 0.5 and work my way up from the x-axis, follow it up, and you can see that's where they want to know the gradient. So I'm going to put my set square up there and try and get as much of the line as I possibly can. Okay, and does that look like a tangent? Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. Maybe a little bit uh, steep, but it's okay, I think. And now I'm going to look for two points, clear points that I can evaluate where my my um, I can see the line. Okay, so I think if I do that, I'm going to have the values. I can work out the rise over the run, can't I? So this is going from seven up to twenty, and that's a gap of thirteen. And this is going from minus one point. Two. Oh no, I'll go for that one here. Minus 1.5 all the way over to 0 0.4, which is a journey of 1.9. So gradient is going to be rise over run, isn't it? So I'm going to do 13 divided by 1.9. I'll use my calculator, and uh, that should give me an approximation to the gradient. And the answer is roughly 6.8. Positive, that's good. So it's approximately equal to 6.8. Okay, and so that's my um, estimate for the gradient of that line. Right, there we have it. So now let's have a little look at the examiner's report. Please do pause if you need to. It's well worth reading what the mistakes of other people. Really, really educational. Okay things that you should avoid yourself. Okay. And once you've paused and read that, we'll just check the mark scheme to see how we did. Yep, three quarters. Yep, x minus three. Yep, that works. And the gradient was between five and seven. So as long as you're somewhere between five and seven, you should be okay.